Okay guys, here's our next segment in our video series for Unit 7, uh, Chemical Reactions. So far, we've talked about uh, two major reaction types. So let's review those to start this, unit, this video off. We talked about combination, where we take A plus B and we make AB. We've also talked about decomposition, where we take a compound and we break it apart into A and B. So we can put things together, we can break things apart. That's two major styles of reactions. Now our third style is what happens if you have a single element with a compound. So what happens if these two things start to interact with each other, what's going to happen there? And we call those displacement reactions, or otherwise known as single displacement reactions. So, for single displacement, reactions, what we have to look at is what is going to happen when those two things intermix with each other. So we have two options. So if we go back to our slide here, Here's our general form. If substance A is a metal, okay, when A reacts, and we're going to call it BC now because we have three different elements present here. So when A reacts with a compound BC and A is a metal, it will replace the metal in the compound, bond with the nonmetal, and it's going to kick the metal out. If A is a nonmetal, when it interacts with the compound, it will kick the non-metal out and bond with the metal. Okay? So we have our examples down here. Lithium is a metal. So if lithium tries to react with iron chloride, the lithium will basically get in a little fight with iron. Okay? So the lithium and the iron kind of get in this little fight, this little battle, to see who gets to stay in the compound. Now the winner of the battle, the person who wins, is the one that's in the compound. Because being in the compound is the more stable configuration because those electrons have transferred and they have those valence electrons of being eight. They have that stable setup. Set up. So the preferred state is to be with the compound. Okay? So lithium wants to be in a compound, so does iron. If lithium battles iron and lithium wins, lithium then gets to be in a compound and iron gets kicked out. Now, on this side, again, if fluorine wants to be part of the compound, fluorine is a non-metal, so fluorine isn't going to replace the, gal the gallium, fluorine is going to replace the bromine. Okay? So fluorine, again, if fluorine is more powerful, it can kick the bromine out, so bromine gets kicked out, and then the gallium and the fluorine become part of the compound. Okay? So it's one reaction type, but we see two different, slightly different things happening. If it's a metal that's by itself, it replaces the metal. If it's a non-metal by itself, it replaces the non-metal, okay? Uh, the way we identify this is a single element, or it could be a diatomic, like in this case here, plus an ionic compound, okay? So we're looking for ionic compounds here, not looking for molecular compounds, not organic compounds. We're looking for an ionic compound with a single thing. So metal plus non-metal, metal plus non-metal with a single element. The compound is almost always in solution, okay? So we're going to see most of our single displacement reactions are run as an aqueous solution. So usually you would put a solid lithium metal in with aqueous iron chloride um, when they do this reaction. And then one thing we're going to do, we're going to assume this always will happen if this single element is a non-metal. So for this, for this side, okay, if we have a non-metal, we're going to assume the reaction always happens, okay? However, if we have a metal that's by itself, we actually have a way to determine if the reaction is going to run or if the reaction never happens in the first place. Okay, to do that, we have to look at something called the activity series. Uh, basically, what the activity series is, it's a ranking list that tells us which metals are stronger than the others. Okay? So if your metal is higher on the ranking list or higher on the activity series, um, than the cation and the compound. So if lithium is higher than iron, that's telling us, then it will be able to replace it. Okay? So the, whichever one is stronger gets to be in the compound on the product side. If the metal is lower than the cation in the compound, 
it won't be able to replace it. So we'll have a no reaction. In those cases, you won't even finish the actual reaction. You'll just write down no reaction, saying that this reaction will not happen. Okay? So let's go through a couple examples, one of each style on the board, and let's work a couple of them out. All right? So if I have aluminum, let's say reacting with, well, let's use silver carbonate. Okay, putting the parentheses around this so you remember that that's a, that's a grouping, even though I don't really need it there. Aluminum with the silver carbonate. Okay, I know that aluminum is higher on the activity series. Okay, we'll show you that in class, that actual activity series. Uh, so you can use that as a reference. Then silver, so the aluminum will be able to replace the silver. Aluminum is a metal, so it's going to replace the metal. So aluminum is going to come in, it's going to kick the silver out. So then the aluminum will bond with the carbonate, and the silver gets put over all by itself, okay? Now, we're not done, because we need to make sure the equation is balanced, and we may need to make sure our subscripts are correct. So silver is a metal, it's all by itself, it's not a diatomic, so this one's done. Aluminum carbonate, this is not done yet. So aluminum is a 3 plus, carbonate is a 2 minus, so I need to have 3 carbonates and I need to have 2 aluminums there, okay? This is correct, this is correct. So now we have our skeleton equation. If we take a look, I have 1 silver, I have 2 silvers, I have 1 carbonate, I have 3 carbonates, I have 2 aluminums, I have 1 aluminum. Okay, so I'm going to start by getting my carbonates right. So my carbonate, I need to have three of those. So now I have three carbonates. I now have three times two for six silvers. So I'm going to put a six over here for my silvers. And I still have two aluminums, so I need to have a two here for my aluminums. Okay, erase some of the extra junk that we don't need. And there's our example of a single displacement when we have a metal that's by itself. It's going to replace the other metal. Okay. Second example, let's say we have uh, oxygen reacting with, um, let's use sodium iodide. Okay. Uh, oxygen would be in its gas form. Aluminum up here would have been in its solid form. This would have been aqueous. And this would have been solid, and this would have been aqueous. Okay, because you're in solution, so the compound you make here will most likely be in solution. We'll actually show you later on in the unit a way to determine if this solidifies or becomes a precipitate, or if this actually stays in solution. So what we'll method does actually determine that? Sodium iodide, that would be in solution. So if we reacted oxygen with sodium iodide, oxygen is a non-metal. So it's not going to replace the sodium, it's going to replace the iodine. So we're going to end up with sodium oxide and iodine, which is a diatomic. Iodine is a solid at room temperature. Sodium oxide probably would be aqueous, staying in solution. Let's check our charges over here, make sure we're balanced. The two is here because it's a diatomic. Sodium is a one plus. Oxygen is a 2 minus, so I need two of those. This is a 1 plus, 1 minus, that's fine. And now let's balance it. So I have two sodiums, I have one sodium, I have two oxygens, I have one oxygen. So I'm going to double this, so my oxygens are both two, which gives me four sodiums. So I'm going to put a four here which gives me four iodines, so I need another two here to balance my equation, okay? So here's one example where we have a metal replacing the uh, metal. Here's an example where we have a non-metal replacing the non-metal for single displacement, okay, guys? That's the video for today. Um, we will come back to class, and we will start with doing a lab that works our way through the activity series and spends more time understanding how we know which element replaces what in terms of metals. We'll start with that on 
our first day back. And then after that, we'll follow up with some more in-class practice and demonstration stuff for you guys. Okay, thank you for your time.